Okay, all. Here is that plant that's, you can't even see the compost bin. That's my new compost bin. I make small compost bins. And I let nature break it down, and it breaks down so fast. Here's that plant that was growing that I don't know what it was. Well, it's obviously not zucchini because it left. It's, it went that direction. It went through my collard. And the fruit, zucchini doesn't leave, is round. So here's what small one. See, the little round fruit. But let's see if I can get in here and show you because it's, there's flowers in here. It's all wound up inside my collard plant. And there's, there's the fruit. It's long. I can't get in there. It's wet. It's been kind of raining this morning. So, it's not spaghetti squash. My guess is, some people said, oh, pumpkin. It kind of looks like a pumpkin, but I think what it is, it's another hybrid of something. So it's probably a spaghetti squash that bred with something else, and it might be a hybrid spaghetti squash and zucchini. I don't want any more spaghetti squash. We grew hundreds of them, and I, th I think we still have some around here. Oh, I think I showed you the other one on the last video. Look at this. Can't get rid of it. The spaghetti squash came up in here, and nobody wanted to pick it. Nobody wanted it. It's been sitting here since September, and today is June, and it's still sitting here, and it's green. Wow, you know what? Maybe it's a special melon, and they make that face cream out of it, and maybe I should be cultivating that. Anyways, that is the squash that's been sitting there since September, and that's a small spaghetti squash that grew in here, and course the vine died away and it's still sitting there and it's yellow and green but anyways going back to the compost I yeah, look we can take a peek down here you see it there's one of the fruits because there's a whole bunch tucked inside kind of a green fruit nicely striped so I I'm gonna say because of what I grew last year it's probably a hybrid and Again, the seeds come up in my compost. I can't seem to stop things from growing. And that's probably what it is. And it'll be fine. I mean, we'll eat it. There's not going to be hundreds of them. Um, but that's it. So it's not a true pumpkin. It's some sort of squash. Are flowers in there growing. This is all from the one plant. Like I said, it's taken off in two directions. There's only one plant in there. My other compost is doing the same thing. I never got to use the compost out of it. Now, if you can see the bed down there. My husband brought that home. He found it in the trash. I think it's an outdoor storage cabinet. It had a lid. I don't think there was a lid when he brought it home. There was no lid. But I started composting in there. And, of course, we have so much squash growing that there were seeds in there. And as I was I kind of stir it up a little bit, add in some broken down wood chips to the top. Look at all the broccoli down there, volunteer broccoli. Um, it started coming up. I just didn't have the heart to break it down. The whole thing is packed. So what I have in here, oh, I can't show you the zucchini that was here, a big one, because I used it last night for dinner. One looked like a zucchini. There's one that looks like a zucchini. Can you see it? Let's see if we can see. And then we've got... So cool. Okay, I can't get in here anymore. We got bugs. Now, see, there's some that are round, and there's bigger round ones down the bottom. I have to be careful. This stuff has thorns. Yep, some of them are round. So I've got multiple plants growing in here. And like I said, I don't have the heart to take this out. So whatever grows, grows. I just start a new compost bin. See, there's a big one down there. Let's see if I can show you that. Oh, that one's long. That's interesting. See that? Do you see what's growing next to it? I don't know if the camera can pick it up. I don't want to break anything. But down there is a purple plant. That's a purple yam. That's in the compost. My husband um, was chopping up his purple yam, the pieces, the rotting pieces and stuff, and threw them in my compost. And yes, it's coming up. See? We got purple yam there. Here's, I'll show you some more. 
three more bins. I picked these up at Goodwill. I went yesterday and I picked up uh, another one for two dollars. So we compost in there and then we top it up with broken down wood chips. And this isn't even prep for growing it because it's just all compost and um, weeds and leaves and, and everything. But look at that. Purple yams. Here they come. They were not planted in there. Again, it's coming out of the compost. Oh, I've got to be careful. It's raining on my camera. Uh, that's a pepper plant. I did a video on that. What I do is when I do start to plant, I like to put pots around it and then it brings... See, I don't know if I can show you. Yep, see? It brings earthworms. And they, they really like hanging out under the pots. And it really seems to help, so I have my own worm castings going on all the time. As long as I keep pots in there, it just keeps the worms very active, and I have worms all the time, so I, I do it everywhere now. But that's it. Got a new experiment going on, and I'll do a video on that as soon as I get that going. I'm Here's more compost. See, this is a compost bin. I have compost bins everywhere. And then I don't have to move anything. I've got, uh, I don't have a shovel here, do I? Yes, I do. Let's see. Sorry for swinging you all around. This has got bird shavings in it, shavings from the animals, and, and then weeds. Oops, sorry. And there's just all kinds of stuff in there. So it's breaking down, and this one I'll have to top up with some more house scraps. Yeah, we have, I don't know what we have. It looks like mealworm cocoons. Huh, could be anything. This one's got, oh look, I'm going to irritate one of my viewers. He wants to crush my eggshells. Look at that. Look at that. He wrote on there, I want to crush your egg eggshells. Okay, look, I'm crushing the eggshells for you. On my birthday today, I am crushing eggshells for you. So don't say I didn't do anything for somebody else on my birthday. Anyways, this is a new experiment I'm doing. This is black jeans that no longer fit. And that is a Gap t-shirt. I'll have to do a video if this works. And what I did was I took the t-shirts and I sewed the top shut. There's another one down there. And like I said, this will be a whole new video. I'll have to see how it works. Everybody's talking about air pruning, so I'm going to try this. If it works, it works. You need less dirt, less soil, and the plants will utilize it better. See, there's a wire basket here. I know this will not work correctly because the outside, ha the material has to get dry. But since I just planted it, I'm one-handed here because one hand is showing you and one hand hmm, is doing that. Let me see. Well, I'll have, like I said, I'll do a video on it. There's a wire basket. See the wire basket? And this is set up in the wire basket. And then, of course, there's good compost and potting soil and broken down compost. Everything's in there. They sure transplanted fine. They didn't even go into any distress at all. If it works... I'll do a video. Maybe I'll do a video even if it doesn't work. But I've been hearing all this stuff. And so, like I said, that was the first one I set up. But it's only been a few days. So that's a shirt. Also, I just threw it on the sewing machine, sewed up the top, and I can explain it more when I do it. I sewed it across the top and cut off the neck and the sleeves. You don't really have to, but I did. And then, of course, it's my husband's old work boots. And I've got something growing in there. These are the swimming pools that I'm just starting to set up for the season. Last year we grew tons of squash in here. And there's a plant. My husband wanted me to pull it out. I don't know what it is. He said it's a weed. It came up in there. It's so pretty. As long as it's not poisonous or anything. So we'll see. Anyways, that's it. I wanted to kind of keep you up to date on the squash plant that's coming up in my compost. And like I said, this will be topped up with more house scraps. And this will be the next layer on this will be the house scraps. And then I'll cover it with some, oh, maybe some of our native soil around here a little bit. 
and hopefully I can prep it before everything grows. But my problem is everything grows before I can prep it. And then I end up with moving, you know, with all these plants growing and just moving on. Even the tomato plants, I haven't bought a single tomato plant this year because everything just comes up. There's my little work table. See what's coming up in here? I got ginger in here. But lettuce is coming up. That's my last year's ginger. And now it's re-sprouted. So I grow ginger here on this table. And I went and got... Oh, that's not it. Here it is. Oh, that... Oh, wait, I can't... I'm brain dead this morning. This sweet plant. Anyways, that, it was one plant I bought. And... I divided it because there were so many in there. Now I got a whole table full that I don't want. Oh well, anyways, I like my mint. I have experimented with a lot of mint and the mint that I like the best to make tea out of, out of is chocolate mint. This is orange and I have spearmint. I thought I had peppermint and I cannot find it. So either it got hybridized or something, it must be around here. There's chocolate. Man, there's a fig tree I've got to get out and move. And, but that's it. I mean, I have so many pots. And I like growing in pots because I can keep track of what's what. Um, I don't have really a problem with it drying out even though we're here in Southern California. I seem to be doing okay. So see, there's more. I had another compost. I love buying these tubs at Goodwill. They have them cheap. They probably get them from Target. And they don't have lids. That's a zucchini plant growing in there. And yes, we have zucchini. I don't know if there's any on there now because I've been picking it. Oh yeah, there's a zucchini. And then again, I do, like I said, I use even milk cartons. And see the worms? That's a avocado tree coming up from a pit. Ouch! And they have thorns, zucchini. And it's red Swiss chard. Lettuce going to seed. There's oregano in there. More lettuce going to seed. Whoops, lettuce. So, I just compost in place. And then I don't have to be doing anything. Here's another one. It's just starting to take off now. I've got them everywhere, as you can see. I just go in all the time, and when they've got them there for $1.99, I just pick them up. And I can sit them somewhere, and then when I have no place to put my compost, I just start a whole new one. See, here's one. I picked up two of these a couple weeks ago. I'm just starting to throw things in there. Leaves, you know, cleaning up around the garden. And when I'm ready, I'll top it up with more house scraps with eggshells and more vegetable matter and, and everything. And then I'll just, uh, I like topping it with broken down wood chips. Which really cool is since I have all these pots, if I dig around the pot, everywhere around the pots, as soon as I go down an inch, it's full of worms earthworms everywhere so i take a lot of that broken down wood chips and i throw that on top and then off i go anyways that's it i'm gonna go figure out what i'm gonna do for my birthday probably nothing my friend needs shoes i'll probably take them to go get shoes i don't need at my age you don't i don't want to celebrate my birthday and it's been kind of rough I don't want to get anybody down. I kind of lost my best friend and my other childhood friend. We were really good friends. I lost her and we both shared a birthday. So it's kind of like, mm, I'll figure out something. Yesterday there were two deer sitting there and of course I didn't get my camera in time. They've been coming across the property. I think my truck bed is down there. And I think they're coming down. There's a thing of water I keep for the bees down there. I want to get a solar powered water fountain down there. I think they're coming down and getting water because I'm finding holes around there. My husband thinks they're coyotes digging the small holes. And I'm suspicious it might be the deer coming down because we, we do get them on the property. And we have lots of rabbits now again, which is good because the coyotes wiped out most of them. So we made a, a lot of habitats for them. And you know what, I grow, I mean, look at this. I grow so much food, I can't get my daughter down here to take any. There's just no way we can eat it all. I mean, there's so much everywhere. And this is just my garden, which is a tiny little nothing off the back of this house. Um, my husband's got down, this is two acres. He's got another one where he's got his garden going and there's no way. And then we've got all the orange trees. We can't use all this food. 
Here's the cabbage I was going to tear out. This is last year's cabbage, and I trimmed it, and I was going to get it out, and look at this. Huge cabbage heads now from last year. So, and then dill's growing. I did plant my dill. This is all, of course, celery, which is a noxious weed. It's a weed here. So I figured, you know what? Let the rabbits live here and eat what they want. That's okay. I mean, I have cameras set up, and it's just so cool at night I watch and you'll see the rabbits come out and they're roaming around in the middle of the night when I'm up and I actually see okay you might get disgusted by it but it doesn't bother me that much I, I saw two rats playing and rolling and playing on the ground here they came out probably to get water and I was watching them just play and play and play just running through the wood chips and playing one night so what are you gonna do you know we all live here together there's more food than I will ever use. So I'm more than happy to share. So that, that's it. So let them come down, eat what they want. Let them have a happy life. And um, we can all live in harmony as long as they don't touch anything I don't want them to touch. Well, you all have a nice day and I'm gonna figure out what I'm gonna do today. And if they color up, you know, before I pick them, like I said, there's the one down there. If it colors up orange, I'll let you all know. I, I'm going to guess it's going to go kind of yellow. I'm hoping you can see it. It's under there. It's quite big already. It's, it's actually bigger than a cantaloupe. And there's quite a few on there. There's a lot of small ones. That's the first big one. So we'll see. I just, like I said, I don't want spaghetti squash. I'm trying to see. See, I put um, pots in here. Oh, I think it's time to uncover this one. And that's squash. And I need to get this out. This is Swiss chard. It comes up everywhere like a weed also. So that's it. I think I'm going to make myself a green drink. And I've done a video on that too. Very simple. You throw in some organic carrots and pick a whole bunch of greens out of the garden. I use, I've got all kinds of kale. I've got the Russian red kale and dinosaur kale and Swiss chard, celery leaves. Oh, if you grow celery, use your celery leaves. There's so many vitamins and nutrients in celery leaves. And I throw that all in the blender with some frozen blueberries that I pick up. Blend it up with the smallest amount of water. So it chops. And just add in a very small amount of water, top it up with grape juice, then whatever else you want to put in. And you got a great drink. I make enough for the whole day. My husband loves it. And I will tell you something that's really odd. I have found that if I eat really bad, and I do, I will admit, periodically I don't eat real good, that I seem to get a little more depressed, especially, like I said, I've lost a couple of my friends and I'm a little more sensitive. But when I'm drinking a good green drink, it seems like my mood and personality is completely different. And I feel like doing more and going more and getting out. So... There must be something to it. And that's it. I mean, there's so many health benefits I could tell you about. And now I'm wasting my breath on, on, on this and everybody's going to go, oh, enough is enough. I'll tell you something real quick. You can shut it off if you're not interested. A few years ago, I was told I had arthritis. I do a lot of typing and a lot of artwork. And I use my hands and I went to Kaiser. And they told me I had arthritis, and their answer, all the time, like any doc most doctors, I don't want to say any because I don't know, is medication. And they said there's nothing they can do. They did their x-rays. You have arthritis. So I just had to learn to live with it. My hands hurt. My back hurts. I had to get a pillow to sit on when I worked on the computer because sometimes I can be on the computer for six, seven hours, which... You know, that's all I could do. Take Motrin, and they gave me something else to take. So when my husband went gluten-free because of something I thought he had, and he tried it and it worked, and I slowly switched over myself, I no longer use a pillow to sit and work on the computer. I no longer take any medication for arthritis. I no longer have swelling in my hands. I no longer need surgery on my knee that they wanted to schedule. I did one knee already uh, to clean up. It, it wasn't a knee replacement, but to clean up because of the swelling. They wanted to do the, I don't need it. 
Um, I don't sit on pillows at all. I don't. In fact, I put them away over a year ago, and I don't have any more uh, pains in my hands. Sure, I mean, I get tired. We're not perfect as we get older, but it, it's amazing. There's been a hundred, I'm going to have to say, let's say 99% difference in health. And yes, a lot of it too will be gardening and eating better, but I was doing green drinks back then too. Maybe I was buying more a few years ago than using it out of the garden, but I really, really feel giving up all wheat, and I did give up all wheat, it makes a world of difference because I have gone places where I was told it was gluten-free, and the next day my knee is swollen up like a balloon, my hands hurt, I'll have a migraine, and then I'll find out they goofed it wasn't. So I, I always tell people, try it. Just try it. You have nothing to lose to try it. I mean, my husband knew in three days that he was never going to eat wheat again because he was suffering with so many health problems and now he has almost nothing. Um, it's, it's worth it to try it. I mean, you have nothing to lose. I cook whole... I make dinner every year, I should say, for Thanksgiving. Nobody knows that the whole thing just doesn't have wheat. There's so many other better substitutes to use and healthier. And not only that, but after turkey dinner and desserts and everything, they want to take off and go to Walmart and do stuff because they don't have that drag down feeling. Even though we have stuffed ourselves because I make three turkeys, it's completely different. You have to watch your turkeys too. Some of them, they stuff with gluten. They don't tell you, but they put a solution in it. So kind of check on that. Get a gluten-free if you want. It's amazing what they do to meat these days. It's just been a world of difference going gluten-free. And what do I miss? What do I miss? I really don't miss anything. Maybe a donut. I mean, if I really want to, I can eat it. I'm not allergic to it, but I will tell you, I will know it the next day. So sometimes, it, you know, it's worth trying. If you've got health problems, there was a girl that had some health problems. She was suffering for two years after having surgery. She told me she had something wrong with an ankle and she couldn't walk. And, uh, and I was talking to her and I said, you know what, just try going, going gluten-free. And I said, if you have to, go to one of the stores like Sprouts or Whole Foods or whatever and get some gluten-free stuff and just try it. She could not believe that within a week she noticed she could walk and run and get on her feet and do things. She called me, she said, it's got to be fake. It has to be fake. I said, well, that's, you know, that's up to you. I don't know. And she said, it has to be fake. And um, so she went back on her regular diet. And then she called me and let me know that she couldn't move again. Her foot was swollen. She was sick. She was suffering from a lot of pain. So she was done. She said that she's just going to have to figure out how to stay away from wheat because her whole foot and ankle was fine. Without the gluten, she was completely fine. It's not so much the gluten that's hurting you, but what it is is what your body does in reaction to prevent itself from get using having that chemical or that product in your body, and it causes inflammation. So what you're doing is you're preventing inflammation. It's like taking heavy doses of Motrin or something. You don't need it if you don't have the gluten and you don't have the swelling in your body. You don't need it. You know, you don't need anything, and I think it's a combination of that. But yeah, it changed her life, and this was this year she just found out. So we'll see. You know, I'm, I'm staying off of it. I don't need it. I, I love cooking. I can cook anything, so it's no big deal. You would never know everything I cook, uh, that there's just no wheat in it. There's so many other better, healthier substitutes. I'm not a vegan. I'm not a raw vegan in any way, of course. But I do like to bake, I do like to cook, and I will find another route of using something else. And you know what? Most of the time it tastes better. I make brownies that, if I make brownies, they're gone instantly. It tastes better. I, I, I have found the food tastes better without all that wheat. Well, that's it. I am going to go figure out what I'm going to do on my birthday. Like I said, probably take my friend to get shoes or nothing. I don't know. Have a wonderful day and um, keep composting. And don't forget to eat what you grow.